देख रहे हैं डीडी नेशनल देश का पहला चैनल देश का अपना चैनल Welcome to Elevate. It's been said that it's not merely about ideas. It's about making ideas happen. And that is exactly what we're about today. Startups, pitching and entrepreneurship are all about those three words, making ideas happen. With a growing economy, increasing technological advancements that are disrupting traditional business models, and of course, a large pool of talented individuals the scope for Indian startups is immense in various sectors. Now, Elevate here, this is a pitching session that acts as the perfect bridge between startups and investors. It's been organized by the Consulate General of India, Dubai, in association with Startup India, CII, FIKI, NASCOM, and T-Hub. The underlying purpose of Elevate is to foster innovation, to encourage entrepreneurship, and to facilitate the growth of even more startups. This serves as a platform for knowledge sharing, collaboration, and of course, visibility within the startup community. This event would not be possible without the support of our sponsors, Bank of Baroda, Upstocks, Lulu Group International, and Lulu Financial Holdings. This year, India's public service broadcaster, Prasar Bharti, has partnered with Consulate General of India, Dubai, to convert the success of this pitching session into a TV show. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to witness this extraordinary event, Elevate. Today, we have a thrilling lineup of nine startups from various sectors, such as edtech, fintech, biotech, agritech, AI, and more and they're raring to showcase their groundbreaking ideas and innovations. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite up on stage the Consul General of India, Dubai, Dr. Aman Puri, to please deliver the welcome address. Can we please have a thunderous welcome? Namaskar, salam alaikum. Very good evening to each and every one of you. It is my privilege and pleasure to welcome all of you here for this very special session which is going to be telecast by Prasar Bharati. As you know, Elevate is itself an innovation. And the aspiration was to showcase India's innovation, to celebrate India's entrepreneurship, the hard work, the talent of the young Indians who would like to take their companies to the global platform. And during Expo 2020 Dubai, we were pleased to have over 700 startups interact with their global counterparts here and meet various stakeholders in this ecosystem. As you're all aware, India, one of the youngest countries in the world with an average age of 29, is aspiring to make its rightful contribution to addressing global challenges and in that process is contributing significantly to the innovation and startup ecosystem globally. Economists, experts across the globe are unanimous in their understanding that in a post-COVID-19 economic recovery and growth, India will be a key engine for that. We see the startups as a very valuable and significant part of that growth and that journey. In the words of Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji, and I quote, he says, I see startups, technology, and innovation as exciting and effective instruments for India's transformation, unquote. That is the philosophy which has motivated the Elevate sessions. And we are so pleased that we are able to showcase some of the brightest and the best ideas from India at this global platform in Dubai. You're all aware that Dubai and the UAE have always been a gateway for Indian companies to the MENA region, to the other economies in this region and globally. 
we are also seeing increasingly startups and innovators use Dubai and the UAE as a springboard for their global expansion, testing their products and services in a globally competitive environment so that they can eventually produce Indian brands which we can be proud of, which are globally competitive and add value to not just the Indian economy, but also to addressing global challenges. I think with that aspiration, we've been trying our best to make a significant contribution in this corridor. Within the startup ecosystem as well, there is the UAE India Startup Bridge, which has been created, and it is meant to connect the various stakeholders in the Indian ecosystem and the UAE ecosystem so that everyone can benefit. And we are absolutely certain that India and the UAE will co-create some of the unicorns of the future, will address global challenges together, contribute not just to the regional economy, but also make a significant contribution to the global economy. Thank you so much for all the partner institutions, CII, FICI, NASCOM, T-Hub, and all the sponsors, Bank of Baroda, Upstocks, Lulu Hypermarket, and Lulu Financial Holdings for supporting this event for today. And a very special thanks to Prasar Bharti for allowing yet another platform and yet another visibility to some of the best and the brightest ideas from India. Thank you so much. It's time right now for a short break on Elevate. We'll be right back. Dad, see what I've made? Wow, that looks like our new home, huh? It's as simple as this to make your dream home come true with Bank of Baroda. Easy home loans in UAE and India with simple procedures, quick approvals and low interest rates. Dad, let's go for a drive in a new car. Let's go. Whoa! Drive your dream car with Bank of Baroda. Speedy car loans at low interest rates. Imagine it and it can be yours. Bank of Baroda, India's international bank. Upstocks. We are India's largest broker, loved and trusted by over 1 crore customers. Our powerful platform simplified many things for traders and investors. From learning, analyzing, researching to stock picking. Our customers can do it all. Pretty significant points uh, made there this evening. And thank you so much for that, sir. Now, of course, uh, we absolutely believe when you say that there is no time like now for unicorns and startups and big ideas in India and this uh, beautiful situation where we have the UAE and India partnering uh, over economic terms makes it even better. And of course, when you say that we're a young country with an average age of 29, it makes many of us in the room feel fantastic. Thank you so much. So here is what's going to happen. Each of the startups that's going to come up on stage, each of our pitchers, will have a limited presenting time of exactly six minutes. The clock will start ticking as soon as they take their space on the stage. I will sound a warning alarm, which is going to be at exactly five minutes so that they are aware that they have one minute to go. So all our pitchers, please do bear that in mind. At the end of your six minutes, the buzzer will go off again and you will be required to stop. But that, of course, signals the beginning of our investor time. So all our uh, investors who are eager with their queries and offers can then take over. It's time for our first picture this evening. Welcome Mr. Sharad Konatam from Fimang. Hi, I'm Sharad. I'm a founding team member of Fimong. We are based out of Hyderabad. 
In India, education being the second largest expenditure of any household, that's what keeps us going every day. I'm really honored to be here at Elevate today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sharath. We are an edu-fintech company based out of Hyderabad, and our startup is Monk. So most of you, while growing up, or you may know very close people related to you, are uh, at some point have struggled uh, with education opportunities because of lump sum fee payment requirements. And especially today in growing India, everybody wants to either upskill or join some kind of training program or a certification program so that you know they can end up in better careers. But most of these programs cost upwards of one lakh rupees and one-time payments are still a problem for most of these professionals. And on the other side, even the K-12 education is private dominated in India, which is, you know, a decent school fees is upwards of 75, 80,000 per kid. And if you have two kids, you know, you can imagine the one-time lump sum payment uh, burden. So precisely that's the problem that FEMONC is solving. Uh, the solution FEMONC is building is basically uh, one is for the students and the second solution is for the institutes. So on the student side, uh, we convert any kind of education fees into easy EMIs. So we partner with the schools, colleges, or the upskilling institutes, and we help them offer installment options for the parents and for their students. So this is one part of the solution. The other part is for the schools and colleges, we also offer B2B receivable financing. So this is the market size of education. And uh, most of you may know India is second largest when it comes to the education sector with 260 million kids in K-12 sector alone. And if you can see the last circle here, that is the attainable market we are going after in the next 48 months. You know, we are trying to reach uh, a, a market of about $500 million. This has been our journey so far. We are close to a two-year-old. Um, uh, we are reaching uh, about two years in our journey right now. We have acquired 90 clients in the B2B space. Again, these span schools, colleges, and upskilling institutes. Uh, cumulatively, we would have disbursed close to 13 crores as of today. Uh, in this slide, it shows 12 crores. Our average IRR on our lending is about 28%, and we are an RBI-approved uh, NBFC. We got our license in 2021. And we recently closed two co-lending partnerships so that you know we can capture more market with the limited capital we have. And this is our AUM trend. Um, our average civil score of a consumer is 721, and average tenure is 10 months. Um, our portfolio is split between upskilling and the traditional education, and currently upskilling is about 75% of this market. So today the AUM stands about 5.5 crores, uh, roughly. That's where we are. And these are some of our clients. And um, you can see that you know the average ticket size is about 1 lakh rupees. And our NPA has been really great because of the education sector and also uh, because of the founding team's uh, expertise in the credit sector. We have been able to maintain a good NPA. So this is how the competition is looking currently. So we basically see this in three phases. So one is the B2B2C. Second is the fee management platform, and third is the B2B lending. So in the B2B2C, there are about four to five players, but for the size of market that is India, you know, we would still think you know, there is room for more people to come here, because the largest of this still does about you know, 1,500 crores of uh, loan book, and the Indian education market is much, much bigger than that. So our mode stands basically in the technology that we are building on the B2B side. For example, if you are a school owner, and if you need you know, a sudden cash requirement of 25 to 30 lakhs, neither your overdraft facility in the banks uh, will cater to that, nor uh, the only other way is to pledge your mortgage you are building or, you know, your assets. So what we are building is, for K-12 schools specifically, we are building a B2B receivable financing where we are able to hypothecate the future receivable, fee receivable through an escrow account. So that's, that's what we are doing right now. Um, that is yet to be launched. As of today, our main revenue source is still through the B2B2C. So this is our revenue model. Um, our average loan tickets ranges between 30,000 to 3 lakh rupees, tenure 3 to 18 months. Um, and you know the IRR that we operate typically ranges between 25 to 35%. And don't confuse this with the interest rate, please. Uh, the IRR is uh, you know, a, a different metric in lending, so it's the return on the capital. For the school, if you have to know, uh, for the school, typically uh, for a one lakh rupee, they have to fork about seven to eight thousand rupees for them to realize this cash upfront and convert this into EMIs for the students. 
This is the founding team. Um, Vikram is the CEO and Jagan and me, we are the founding team. And we three come with prior banking fintech experience and uh, we understand the credit sector very well. Currently, we are seeking to raise $1 million and our next objective is to build a loan book of 50 crore. And so part of these funds will go to, you know, uh, leverage and build a loan book, uh, raise some debt fund uh, using this equity. And also uh, about 20% will be deployed on the tech and product and also scale the sales and market. Well, that was fascinating. The excitement and the pitching will continue right after this break. Upstocks. We are India's largest broker, loved and trusted by over 1 crore customers. Our powerful platform simplified many things for traders and investors. From learning, analyzing, researching to stock picking. Our customers can do it all. The pitchers have presented, the investors have now got questions on their minds, so let's go hear them. This is GF Periwar from SeedVC. Uh, congratulations uh, to identify the problem and linking it with business model. I want to understand in terms of your, uh, how you'll bring, bring the loan book, from where you will raise the capital, what's your strategy behind it, and what's the um, uh, spread between the borrow cost and the lending side of it? Right. So currently, our NBFC has a net owned fund of 2.1 crores, and our book, we were able to reach up to 5.5 uh, crores. So uh, RBI allows you to leverage up to 7x of your own capital, but the market allows you to go up to 4x, because beyond 4x, they will treat it as a risky proposition. So the idea is here, if we raise about 8 crores, now we'll end up with a 10 crore paid up capital, which will allow us to easily raise 40 uh, crores in debt fund. Now this is the lending capital. This is this is the lending capital I'm talking about. Because our tenures are ranging from three months to twelve months, you know we are going to rotate this capital. So we have a uh, fund calculator for every ten crores. We need about six crores of lending fund, base fund. So the idea is, you know, with this uh, forty crore, we'll be easily able to meet that fifty crore requirement. So that's the uh, the workflow. Uh, yeah, coming to the second question, the spread. So currently our blended cost, so we have raised uh, funds through wholesale lending uh, at 17% because we are very early. We also raised NCDs uh, at 15%. So our blended cost currently stands at 16% and our average return stands at 28%. So current spread is about 12% and the whole uh, you know, uh, uh, recipe will be in how do we optimize the cost of capital going forward. So you acquired the license or you applied for the license? So we, we have acquired a license. Can you share the price of the license? Um, so it, it, was, it was upwards of 60 lakhs. So. That's fine. Uh, my second question is that uh, who actually gets the loan? Like in K-12, definitely the students can't get loan. Parents, right? Parents, yes. And in the higher yeah. education? So whenever a student, whenever the uh, student who is actually learning yeah. is beyond 18 years old, if they are working and they can establish their salary, they are the student and the applicant. But if they are 18 plus, but they don't, they can't establish an income, so they will be the co-applicant, but the main borrower will be either their family member or a friend, whoever they introduce. Correct. And you're raising $1 million. Correct. What valuation? So we are ready to dilute at 20%. Okay. So would be interested. It's definitely. about 32 crore. Not at this valuation, but definitely <laughs> will be interested. We can discuss. Thank Perhaps you. a negotiation, maybe a little <laughs> later. 
you want it to do now <laughs> <laughs> we don't no, it's negotiable we like can that. talk later but thanks uh, for the request definitely would like to go ahead with this would you thing. like yeah. to actually take this forward now just so we can all get a taste of there things. is definitely a lot of <laughs> <laughs> for sure uh, there is definitely a lot of due diligence because it's an nbfc and uh, you know this is not uh, the due diligence have to take time Correct. typically about 30 to 45 yes. days uh, but uh, we can do a lesser amount for a right. 20% let's right. say i don't know what i can offer you now but i need to go through your financial books sure but it can be not very far off what you are i'm not going to offer you 2 crores for right. uh, a 20% but yes definitely somewhere near sure. that figure sharad so how discuss. does that make you feel hearing that right now it feels worthwhile the journey that i made from hyderabad so thank you <laughs> uh, thank you we are extremely proud of what we are seeing here this evening and the pitching will continue on elevate right after these messages kahan ja rahe hain aapka beta bada ho gaya papa aur ab hamara ghar bhi get quick and easy home loans from bank of baroda for your dream home app stocks We are India's largest broker, loved and trusted by over 1 crore customers. Our powerful platform simplified many things for traders and investors, from learning, analyzing, researching to stock picking. Our customers can do it all. Welcome back to Elevate. The pitching continues. Dharmendra Savlani from Savvy Impex. My question to you is two folds one you have registered yourself as a fintech sector but i don't see a lot of tech over here i yep. still see it as a very conventional business right so i still need to see how will you scale this business right secondly i see a limitation in terms of growth so every time you need to raise money you will have to dilute equity if you go by the format that you are in yep. unless you pivot into a different business model this will again be a cap for how much money you can raise max So let's say as an NBFC, the best case scenario you dilute your equity as much as you can, and you manage to raise equity of 50 crores, you will still be stuck at an AUM of 250 crores. Let's say roughly on that range. Right. So how do you break that barrier, and how do you take care of the technology part, which I see is still missing? Uh, uh, two parts to that answer, uh, Darvinder. So first part is. Just imagine you are paying your school kid fees through online payment. So when you go to the payment gateway today, an Indian parent sees UPI, net banking, debit card, and credit card. So our idea is to add the fifth option there: pay later with FEMO, and that has to be enabled through technology, and that's the tech part of it, which is like 90% built, and that you are going to see it in action. So there is this is completely. Are you there different. yet? that's what i'm saying so it's uh, you know we are there we haven't launched that part yet so this is a pay later product end of the day the idea is to you know build as many avenues as possible to build this loan book so that's the tech part of it and that's just one example the b2b is another example so there are a lot of tech driven products here which are making sure to fuel this uh, loan book pipeline and uh, can you remind me the second question sir the second question is about your limitation being an nbfc yes. in terms of your fundraising correct so i agree so there is a thesis after besmes uh, fintech thesis that you know the lending is always the raw material itself is the capital and so you can't keep funding it but the thing is if you see any successful fintech with nbfc license today in india you know take it credit b or you know navi or anything so at some point you they diversify into different things and if you uh, and we we don't really talk about it because we are too early but at some point if you are a parent you would want to see how can i build a college fund my Uh, fund for my kid or how can i protect my students uh, my kids fees if something were to happen to me how can i just buy a micro insurance not a term insurance so there are a lot of other ancillary things that you can build for the education market okay so our idea is although we are a lending company we are core lending but you know we, uh, how do we break this barrier of the coming the raw raw material for this and how do we grow beyond this so there are some ideas around that to build more and more products around this ecosystem but that would be diluting your core idea if you get into insurance and other revenues of financial so advisory and all that so i'm talking about it's take any late stage startup today in fintech in india tell me they are doing one thing i don't think so you go to navi app you go to uh, navi app does personal loan and home loans insurance and so many things pm does that credit b does 
So when you are after five, six years, when you have reached a 5,000, 6,000 crore loan book, you have to do that. So that's how you are going to build the uh, sure, that the is time. my question. How will you build your loan book to five to six thousand crore unless you keep diluting your equity? And do you see yourself diluting? How much equity can you dilute to raise five to six thousand crores? I don't, at this rate, doesn't seem to go beyond 250, 300 crores. I do, I mean, there are live examples in the market which, uh, you know. Well, there has to be some pivoting to be done. And Correct. as I said, the business model is good, sure. but you will definitely require some pivoting there. Right. Yes, I do have an answer. Okay. And as, I, as Mr. Dhyanu said, I am interested in your uh, company. Right. Valuation is definitely high, but uh, it requires some kind of mentorship from, yes, from uh, experienced people as well. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's two potential interested parties here in the room. In yes, I can say that, yeah. This uh, fee monk. That is fantastic, Sharad. Thank you. And Sharad, while, while your time is up, we're making an exception right now because this is getting very, very interesting. I like how this is heating up. You can make that three. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but there is some NBFC, you've acquired NBFC, okay? There are a lot of NBFCs in India which has done shady businesses in the past. So obviously the due diligence is a very, very important part which our gentleman has raised. Right. Okay, so that has to be done. The valuation is second and other important things. And the third thing is for me, it's an ethical point which I would like to raise. You just said uh, that you're raising, you're lending at around 25, 26% and your cost of lending is around 17% weighted average, you said 16. And that's how the arbitrage which you make. So I think this is not a sustainable business model. Okay, 26% lending where the repo rate in India is around six, six and a half, where the average lending rate for NBFC is around 13, 13 and a half. Okay, you are actually taking double of it. This will not fly. So you'll have to find a business model which is more sustainable, long term, and also legit, I call it. Ethics, because you are in education, you're giving educational loans. It's all about the future. You can't overcharge the kids, right. which are going to be the future of our country. Right. So these three things, actually, all those things, if all put together, um, game on with these three gentlemen. Okay, we can, uh, we, I know all those, both those gentlemen together, we are happy and the one thing which I also want to do it with you is that I'm going to connect you to uh, a company which is a very big company based out of Dubai who has tie up with 2000 universities across the globe. I know the founder very well, uh, he's an ex-boss of mine and uh, they can actually help you because a lot of traffic which comes from India, so those who go, so that can be your potential partner where you can actually lend it to them because they are looking for lending. Right. Great. Thank you. Let's give it up for Sharad once again. Well, that got pretty serious pretty fast. This is Elevate and we're going to be bringing you more pitching sessions, so watch out for episode two. So who, who owns the liability? But don't you think you should be focusing more on your growth with your existing product line? Yes. And tapping into that industry before you try to diver uh, diversify and spend a lot more on the on scaling up again? Uh, I'm not sounding disparaging at best, but they can't compete. You deserve a round of applause. That was a lot of grilling. And it is extremely tough to stand there and present and then answer all of these questions all by yourself.